All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 36. So to solve this problem, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 3 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 36 to the power of 3. Now 36, this is the same thing as 6 to the power of 2. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 2 to the power of 3. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 6 to the power of 2 to the power of 3, that's going to equal 6 to the power of 2 times 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 6. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And m and n, I can actually switch the place of these two because in multiplication, you can switch the place of these two numbers. So this is the same thing as a to the power of n times n. Well, if a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n, and that's equal to a to the power of n times m, this means that this is also equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. So you could switch the places of these two exponents. So in this case, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3, and I can think of x to the power of 3 as m and 3 as n. So this is the same thing as a to the power of n to, to the power of m. So if I switch these two places, I get x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3, which is equal to 6 to the power of 6. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 3 equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 6 to the power of 6. And if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 6. Now remember we set x to the power of 3 equal to y, meaning 6 is equal to x to the power of 3. So to solve this, all I have to do is take the cube root on both sides, and I get the cube root of 6 is equal to x. So this is my answer. Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 4 minus 16 is equal to 0. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first rewrite 16 here as 4 to the power of 2. So now I have x to the power of 4 minus 4 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now x to the power of 4, that's the same thing as x to the power of 2 times 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 2 times 2, that's going to equal x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 minus 4 squared is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x squared and b is 4. So I have x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And now for x squared minus 4, I can rewrite that as x squared minus 2 squared. And again, remember if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So x squared minus 2 squared, that's going to equal x plus 2 times x minus 2, which is equal to 0. So now, this gives me three equations to work with. I have x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. I have x plus 2 is equal to 0. 
and I have x minus 2 is equal to 0. So let's first start off in the easier equations, which are x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. So if x minus 2 equals 0, all I have to do is add 2 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 2. So this is one solution. If x plus 2 equals 0, all I have to do is subtract 2 on both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 2. So I have two solutions already. And now finally, for x squared plus 4 equals 0, to solve this, I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides, and I get x squared is equal to negative 4. Now, if I take the square root on both sides, I get the square root of x squared is equal to square root of negative 4. The square root of x squared is x. And the square root of negative 4, I can write as the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And if you guys already didn't know the square root of negative 1, that's equal to i. So now I have the square root of 4, which is positive or negative 2, and i. So these are my four solutions. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 3 is equal to 12. So, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as I'm going to first start by adding x to the power of 3 and subtracting x to the power of 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2 plus 12 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to rewrite 12 here as 8 plus 4. Now 8, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, and 4 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 2. Now if I switch the order of these, I get x to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. And now from here, if I factor out negative 1, I get negative x to the power of 3 minus 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So in this case, this is going to equal x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 2 squared, which is 4. I have this minus x to the power of 3 minus 2 squared, or sorry, x to the power of 2 minus 2 squared, which is all equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So x squared minus 2 squared, let me write all of this. This is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now from here, if I factor out x plus 2, I get x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4 minus x plus 2, which is equal to 0. And this simplifies to x plus 2 times x squared minus 3x plus 6 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have x plus 2 is equal to 0, and I have x squared minus 3x plus 6 is equal to 0. So for x plus 2 equals 0, x is obviously equal to negative 2, so this is one solution. And for x squared minus 3x plus 6 equals 0, to solve this we have to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 3, and c is 6. So I have negative negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a 
and this simplifies to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 24 over 2. And if you notice, 9 minus 24, that's negative 15. So I'll have square root of negative 15, and you can't actually take the square root of a negative number. So this is wrong, and my only solution is x equals negative 2.